Hello everybody, Ellie here for Who Culture, and we are on a roll with news announcements for the upcoming season of Doctor Who, are we not? Oh my goodness, it's the second one in less than a week. There's so much excitement going on. If you haven't seen it, breaking news, sort of, Stephen Moffat has been confirmed to be writing an episode in the upcoming season one slash series 14. I know a lot of people have got confused by me referring to it as season one. But that's a whole different video that you can check out if you want an explanation on that. But I digress. So it's the third episode in season one that he has been confirmed to be writing. Now at the moment, that is the only episode that we have confirmation of. But that's not to say that there might not be more in the future. But we'll get to that speculation a little bit later on in the video. So for those of you who might not be aware of who Stephen Moffat is, why it's so significant that he is returning, um, a little bit of backstory, a little bit of detail. He was a writer during Russell T Davis's first time as showrunner. And he wrote a handful of episodes throughout those years and then when Russell T Davis stepped away it was Stephen Moffat who took the mantle and became showrunner for the 11th and 12th Doctors and then he stepped away when the 12th Doctor regenerated in 2017. Basically in other words he has a long-rooted history with Doctor Who or at least with modern Doctor Who. Um, he created two amazing Doctors, he's responsible for the creation of the Weeping Angels, River Song, we'll get back to her later, and he he was also in charge when the 50th anniversary um, came around and so he was the showrunner for that special. Basically a lot of great things came from Stephen Moffat. But most importantly it's how amazing his episodes actually are. So if you actually look at the, the top 10 greatest episodes um, as voted by the readers of Doctor Who magazine uh, back in November last year I believe it was, Five of those 10 episodes were Stephen Moffat episodes. In first place you had Heaven Sent, in second place you had World Enough and Time and The Doctor Falls, then in fifth place you had The Day of the Doctor, sixth place you had Blink, and in tenth place Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead, my personal favourite. I mean, if you think about the entire history of the show, all the writers that have worked on the show, and he gets half of that list. That's an impressive achievement. What that does mean though is that there is an insane amount of pressure riding on this new episode that he is writing for season one. Can it live up to the expectations? And there is a concern that perhaps it won't. But then again, people probably would have assumed the same thing after Blink. It was so amazing, so wonderful, so different for the structure of Doctor Who that it just couldn't possibly be topped. But then, come a few years later and we got given Heaven Sent and that one topped Blink in many people's opinions. So it has been done before and it can very well be done again. It just means there is a lot of pressure riding on this episode and on Stephen Moffat. Now I know there was a little bit of divisiveness with regards to how audiences reacted to some of the more complicated plot threads of Stephen Moffat's stories. Obviously when he became showrunner he had more control over the overall story arcs as opposed to when he was just writing for Russell T Davis, he just delivered banger one two parters that were kind of self-contained. Just quickly touching on the River Song story arc, many loved it for its co complexity and how um, things connected to things that seemingly were unimportant to begin with and they slowly um, kind of slotted together. Other people felt that it was too complicated and too confusing. So there is divisiveness, but as I said, at the moment there's only one episode, so at the moment we are looking at getting another Heaven Sent, another Blink. Knowing that that is how his mind works, I don't doubt that whatever episode we do get will be complex to a degree. That's just how Stephen Moffat's mind works. He's very good at those, um, those stories that slowly weave together to create this amazing revelation and I, I would love to just get inside his brain and figure out how he does it because... So with regards to the new episode, um, if it is indeed episode 3, which I believe it is, then it will be airing on the 18th of May, which really isn't that far away. It's also very strange to be able to talk about this now as a confirmed fact because it's been rumoured for so long at this point, it kind of... It is breaking news, but at the same time, is anyone really surprised? Because those rumours have been floating around for so long. I mean, we did a video reporting on the rumour of Stephen Moffat's return back in February 2023, so over a year ago, and that wasn't even the first time we'd heard those rumours. It was just the first time we had commented on it in a video. So although it is, wow, yes, amazing, 
it's also not surprising at this point. <laughs> it's also funny because in this entire year building up, Stephen Moffat has outright been denying any involvement in Doctor Who moving forward, full on lying, and there's been plenty of headlines that suggest old Moffat denies Doctor Who return. What it really goes to show is that you can never trust what anyone says with regards to will you be returning to Doctor Who. This is such a secretive show, and we've seen from past experience actors outright denying or creatives outright denying any involvement for that to be complete and utter rubbish. You know, it's thing that happened with David Tennant, it happened with Catherine Tate more recently. So, and this is not Stephen Moffat's first rodeo. He knows that there is an element of lying to the press and to the public with regards to his involvement. That's just the nature of how this works. There's a strategy for when things will be announced and you just cannot reveal them. In this line of work, there are embargoes, there are things and you cannot break them. So it means you have no choice but to lie when outright asked these questions. And what's quite funny is that in this press release with this announcement, Stephen Moffat kind of jokes about that very fact that he has been lying this entire time. This is what he said. Yes, okay, fair enough. Apologies to everyone I very slightly misled. I am in fact writing an episode of the new series of Doctor Who. Exactly like I said I never would. What can I tell you? There was begging, there was pleading, but finally Russell agreed to let me have another go. So long as I got out of his garden. Just that quote reminds you of how great a writer Stephen Moffat is. <laughs> So the next question will be, what is this episode going to be about? And at the moment, that remains to be seen. That still under wraps a big secret, but there are a few things that we can deduce um, from the things that we do know. So firstly, the director of this episode, Julie Ann Robinson, she says that she asked Stephen Moffat to use a single word to describe the tone of this episode, and he said Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock. It's like my mouth can't form the sounds quick enough. Alfred Hitchcock, obviously very famous for being a great thriller director. Think Psycho, think Rear Window. So that obviously suggests that we're getting a thriller episode. That kind of, to me, indicates that it's going to be quite contained. There's not going to be very many characters necessarily. It's going to be very intense, very focused. Maybe something similar to Midnight or even Blink when you think about it. There's a very reduced number of characters in Blink. Yes, they are going to different locations, but in itself, it's quite a contained story. So secondly, Russell T Davis posted some teaser words um, on Instagram with some emojis when this announcement was made. So he said that the Doctor and Ruby visit the most dangerous world you can imagine, ominous. Um, and then he listed three different words, antelope, moment, drums. Make of that whatever you will in the comment section down below. Let's try and crack the code. Although we had words released um, in the build up to the 60th and no one was able to determine what they meant. So we can try our best, but I feel like we will never understand what these words actually mean. So the emojis that were also used in this post were also very interesting. So the final two that were in this post, you know, you've got the obvious two hearts and all those parts, but the final two, you've got this kind of circular blue shape and an explosive, a bomb. So if we go back to the first trailer for season one that we saw, there are a couple of shots that kind of suggested that the Doctor had perhaps stood on a landmine. That a landmine, or what we're assuming is a landmine in the trailer, looks very much like the emoji that's been used. The kind of the shape of it, the kind of detailing of it, does very much look like the landmine in the trailer. I also feel like the idea of of that whole situation of being stuck stood on a landmine, it does fit that kind of Hitchcock vibe that we are uh, speculating over. And just the thought of a, an entire episode that's focused on the characters being stationary stood on landmines trying to find a way out of this dilemma. I mean, that sounds really, really good. And it does sound like a typical Moffat episode, something that really makes you think. It's kind of not, not so fast paced and much more psychological, perhaps. I'm very excited about the prospect of this episode. Also, can I just say how clever they seem to have been with these emoji things? Because how are they doing it? Who is scouring through all the emojis on an iPhone or whatever to find ones that are appropriate for these announcements? Like, it's like a chicken and egg situation. Do they, do they find the emojis and then write the story? Or do they... I'm fairly certain that the story comes first, but I just, it's blowing my mind how they are finding the perfect emojis to suit every announcement they need to make. Also in Russell's description, he mentions a woman is involved. Now, we can assume that it's maybe an original character. It could also be Mrs. Flood. 
But, and I told you we'd get to her, I told you we'd circle back, it's me. Of course we're not going to overlook that massive detail. River Song. River Song and Stephen Moffat come hand in hand. He created the character, he was responsible for the whole story arc of that character, he wouldn't allow other writers to write for that character, and so when he stepped away, there was an episode we had the husbands of River Song that kind of closed off that story. However, with the return of Stephen Moffat, there is a much higher chance that there could be the return of River Song. I am very excited about this possibility. Now, as I said, this is not new. Um, in terms of we've kind of heard rumours of Stephen Moffat's return for a while. So I've been getting excited about a possible River return for quite some time. But given how complex the character is, I don't know whether it would serve the character well and serve the show well for her to be in a single episode. Having said that, we mentioned at the beginning that just because we have only been told of one episode that Stephen Moffat is writing, that doesn't mean he is only writing one. And if there is the potential that he is creating more than one story for Doctor Who, then there is a higher possibility that River would return. I don't know that for one episode he would bring that character back. There would need to be a real significance to her return. And as much as I want to see Alex Kingston back in the role of River Song, it has to mean something. I don't want it to just be, you know, a fleeting one episode thing. And in relation to that idea that there could be more than one episode written by him, literally last week, it was noticed that producer Alison Sterling, her CV listed Stephen Moffat as the writer of the 2024 Christmas special. And then his name was very quickly removed. But I highly doubt that a professional official CV would have the wrong name on it. You'd think it would more likely say Russell T Davis, and that would be the mistake. But the fact that it said Stephen Moffat suggests that someone found something they weren't supposed to. And then there was this kind of curious point um, that was noted by the Doctor Who production news account on Twitter. Um, which is a wonderful account, go follow them if you're you know, not already. And it was a quote that was recently given by Stephen Moffat about once again denying his involvement with Doctor Who. Now pay attention to a few of the words mentioned in this. The truth is, if I say anything negative about Doctor Who, it goes everywhere. Like, boom, everywhere, right? It doesn't exactly bring joy to the world that I just say something negative about Doctor Who. Now we know that Moffat is a cheeky chappy, so could these be clues? Boom perfect title for an episode that may or may not be centred around standing on a landmine. Joy to the world? Also the perfect title for a Christmas special. What? So one final thing worth mentioning is that Russell T Davis did suggest that he did also reach out to Chris Chibnall um, for, to write an episode before he contacted Stephen Moffat, uh, but Chibnall actually declined. Now I'm not sure if this was actually more of a joke, um, but it does make sense. Chris Chibnall has just stepped away from being the showrunner for Doctor Who. It makes sense that he's like, Do you know what? I need a break. I'm gonna go chill for a while. You take over. I'm done for a bit. Moffat is back for at least one episode and it is very, 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 very exciting. It does feel, I know we've said this before, but when things like this happen, it does feel like Doctor Who is back. I know there's been a little bit of concern about recent announcements and things, but in the grand scheme of things, Doctor Who is back. It's bigger and better than ever and it's very, very exciting. And just to add to that, we may or may not be getting a trailer drop this Friday. So keep your eyes peeled to the channel. If there is in fact a trailer dropped on Friday, we will of course be breaking it down. But in the meantime, I've been Ellie for Who Culture. And in the words of River Song herself, goodbye sweeties.